Hello everyone, today we're gonna get a basic introduction to Splunk and uh, our objective is to get uh, accustomed to navigate the Splunk uh, interface. We'll talk about how we can add apps to it, uh, how we can uh, input data, we'll do basic queries, we'll talk about the Sigma rules and how we can use it uh, to share different indicators of compromises between different SIM platforms. We'll create a basic dashboard and we'll make a basic visualization. And also we'll talk about how we can create some alerts uh, to be generated automatically for us. So let's start it. And um, what is a Splunk? So Splunk is a, uh, a security information and event management, but it's not used only for the security uh, teams. It can also be used for the data analysis, for DevOps to do a basic uh, um, uh, investigation and so and more to it. And the Splunk is just one of the more uh, multiple themes available on the market but is the one the most popular and the most worldwide use. And here is a couple more um, alter alternatives of the themes. And we have the IBM Q Radar, Alien Vault, Unified Security Management, McAfee Enterprise Security Manager, Solar Winds, and uh, Log Reef Manage Generation Sim. And all of them have some pluses and minuses. And uh, different companies will use a, a different sim based on their needs. But um, we we can use um, we can use the Sigma rules to 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 be able to share all this. Um, um, indicators of compromises in the format needed for a specific uh, sim. So um, Splunk is it's uh, it's one of the most popular, but it has a, a drawback in in the point that it has a, a steep learning curve curve if you want to do like a a, a deeper um, analysis. So. That's the that's that you have to keep in mind when when you choose the Splunk. So what SIM can do for us? SIM can do basic security monitoring, advanced friend detection, for instance, an incident response. It can uh, um, uh, integrate logs from different sources, and it can normalize to be read uh, read it in the same format. And we can create. Um, like notification and alerts to be notified when a certain rules are triggered so we can take action on it. And um, you can set up um, even a threat response based on the workflow or an a run book. So that's that's what you can do with Splunk. And plus you can do a basic data analysis like uh, you can analyze user's behavior and get a ba better understanding of what user's needs are so you can um, you can make changes and adaptation for your company. Um, let's go next. I mean, I have deployed my machine already. If you didn't do so right here, you don't need an attack box for it. You'll just do the split view and you'll get the instance ready for us. So we'll do a basic navigation for Splunk. We'll talk about the the Splunk bar, like what features it has there, and um, like app panel, and how we can do a search and reporting with Splunk, and uh, it can be done in the instance. So I'll open my instance in here, and I'll just open it in a new browser and a new page. right here I need this one because the other one is the attack box but I need the, the, the Windows machine here where we have a pre-installed Splunk all right so I'll come to our machine and we'll search for the Splunk app It's a bit lagging this machine because we use it on the web browser, but let's 
give it some time. Alright, so my uh, machine boots up and uh, you'll get the basic dashboard, like um, default dashboard for the Splunk. And uh, what we're gonna pay attention here, like this is the um, Splunk bar here where we got messages. If for example, we set up some alerts or well, um, they are triggered, we'll receive messages in here. Or also you can set up alerts to receive emails with um, when, when the alerts are triggered. Here is the basic setting where we're gonna do the configuration where you can add data, check indexes, share source types, and uh, more configuration like setting up users, roles, and authentication methods, like basic system configuration, and other stuff, and uh, help that gives you some tutorials, and like contact support, and so on. So, what else we have here? We have an app bar where we can add apps in here, like if you choose the find more apps, um, you can like basically you'll have here a list of um, categories that you can sort by where you'll have like more, uh, newest apps in here. This instance doesn't have internet connection, so it will not display anything. But if you have a connection, you will have all the apps in here, and also have a categories in here where you can sort by. And let's go back to our um, dashboard there is another feature like a search and reporting which is the most used where we are searching for uh, for certain um, queries right like here we're gonna insert our query and based on this we'll receive um, we'll, we'll receive data output and you can search for your history that you've done here is some filters you can use like sort by all time like in particular frame time and real time and you can give it uh, like a granule, granular um, filtering just by date and timing here. And then you have anal analytics, data sets, reports, and alerts. I mean, all these are uh, features available in the paid version. And in this instance, it's a free account. You will not have it, but you can have dashboards where you can create a dashboard based on the, on the searches you've done. You can uh, create a dashboard and here you're gonna do it and you can even save it and display it on a home page so let's go back to our home page uh, where we can discuss what's here so for example here is add data here we can add data like we can add logs in here that we want to analyze and um, for example, there is our preset logs that are already available. Like if you choose monitor, it will give you the, the, the available presets in here. Like you can choose the local events logs and uh, select the, the one that are already available for you. And uh, you can choose it, review it and like review those type of logs. You can also use to import a remote event logs like from different um, instances. Um, like agents available on our systems because the sim is an integrated tool and you can use data like to aggregate a massive amount of data from different type of sources, different devices. So that's, that's the point of all the sim. And you can see through it and choose the types of data you want to add. Also, you can add manually some data and we'll discuss this later on, but let's go back and, um, discuss about our dashboard in here. Here, for example, is it's, it's, it's empty, but you can add a home dashboard and you can customize it. For example, by default, you can choose here uh, the default dashboard they have for you. And here is more listing of those um, pre-configured dashboards. Like if you would have yours that you preset up, you'll have it in here in yours and where you can filter it or you can choose wall and it will show you all available pre-configured dashboards that you can select and choose and you can edit uh, do some configuration if you want for it and you can use it right away 
and let's go to our room we discussed about messages settings apps panel so yep we got a basic introduction about Splunk apps and let's go move to the Splunk um, apps how, how we can add uh, some apps in here uh, like we discussed about the search bar uh, how we can uh, use a search bar and do our queries in there and uh, get the output based on our query um, you also can go and edit um, properties for for the for a certain app like for example um, we can go to settings in here and here is all the available apps right now on this dash um, on this instance right so let's see we have a app which is called um, uh, searching right search so for example we can find this app and we want to edit the properties of it so we'll we'll, we'll choose edit properties and you can even rename this app um, let it uh, check for updates all the time and you want to, to be it visible in the dev, in the apps uh, panel and you can choose um, like uh, a file that you want to add on it so that's how you can edit apps um, settings um, also we can edit the, the, those default settings that we have uh, on the on our instance and you can do this by going to the file location and find the user prep.conf that's the the settings that you will will uh, edit if you want to change some default settings and here is the output for the linux but it can be in different location i mean this is by default but if you for example have installed splunk in a different uh, file in the different directory then you will go there and file find this um, find this file where you can edit it and then you will need to restart the splunk so let's do um, basic um, let's do some changes right let's go find this file on our uh, machine and uh, it says it's in local default program files uh, splunk and it's yetsy file folder apps and uh, we have folder defaults and here's our uh, default settings file which we can edit so for example I want to change the default uh, the default settings for um, for the uh, for the instance like whenever we launch it first time we don't see like a basic dashboard but we want to get right away to the search and the reporting so we can just change the search in here and it's gonna change the it's gonna change how, how the, the app is gonna open so I update this file I save my changes and I need to go and reset the Splunk I also need to close the app because I'll need to restart it um, to get the changes done so I'll use the partial for this where I'm gonna run the Add stop Splunk. So I'm gonna stop the application and then restart it, and all this configuration will be applied to 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 the new changes I've made. Um, it can take a bit, and I'll just pause and wait for it to 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 be done. Oh, actually, it didn't pause this time. I'll start. So it will it will tell us that it's been first uh, started successfully then we can go and get back to our instance and see the changes that we've made so I'll restart the Splunk app
and we can see right away it boot up and it brings us right away the search bar tab so that's how you are doing some basic um, default changes also keep in mind that if you do these changes uh, save this file somewhere else like make a copy of it and save it somewhere else because whenever you will come and update the next version of this one let's say you use the, you use the version 8.1.2 and it's come up the version 8.2 and you're gonna update it to the new version all your default setting, settings will be overwritten so it's basically all your changes that you've made uh, custom for yourself will be overwritten and will get the default settings back so just save the file somewhere else and you get all these uh, settings and whenever you need to re-update it, you'll just reapply those settings to your device. Um, I'm just going to go back and uh, change it to default settings so we can use the same format and uh, to navigate the, the instance as they have it in the try hack me because you'll not be able to see the same dashboard in here. Um, you'll need to just do in a different way like add data here instead of having a basic dashboard in there and display all this so I'm gonna go and change the settings and restart the instance and be right back alright I'm back so let's go to try my room and see their objectives here so like basically I've already discussed about how we can add uh, more apps in there uh, like you see, that's how you're gonna see the dashboard. Uh, and here is the categories that you can search by. Uh, by. And that's how you will see like other um, apps available in there. And uh, that's how I should do it in here. But we will not see it here. So that's the dashboard that you're gonna see if you have a uh, um, paid account. And also, you can go and download those apps directly from the AR Splunk base uh, website. So you'll find the same applications in here. And like I showed case in here, you see the categories, like base by category. And here is the categories that you're gonna see. If you have the paid version, you can just select it from here. But if you want to go and download them, you can come in here to this website and select a spe uh, specific category if you look for certain apps or you can just search all uh, apps in here and download them and then you can import them directly from your device so that's what they show us here that we can come and install an app from a file so let's showcase it like on this one it gives us an error because we don't have a connection but we can come and install apps it's the data in. I think it's in the app settings yes yeah, sorry um, go to app settings and here it is you can install an app from a file like here is gonna show you all the apps that we already have installed in here but here we can come and browser for more app if we have the the paid version like I just showcase it and here we can come and install an app from a file so let's go and do this like how we can upload a file we can choose the file path and choose the file in there and in our case uh, we have a pre-downloaded uh, Splunk add-on for Microsoft Sysmon app and we can import this uh, application so that's basically how you're gonna do it So we can see it in here, Microsoft Sysmon add one, and here is the folder name and version for this app that we just added on. So that's that's how they showcase it in here. You can download it. You can also import or remove uh, um, any apps from the command line, but you'll need to provide the authentication, like your user credentials and passwords for that account to do so. And here we'll have um, like some questions regarding uh, like what's the folder name for this app that we just imported. So I just showcase it in here. That's the folder name, and here it is, its version. And uh, let me just um, reset all this uh, progress. 
so we can get more interaction with the dashboard itself and put some uh, add some inputs in it as well so we've done this we have done this and uh, here is the one that asks for the folder folder name and we'll come in here and the version and that's our version for this uh, app that we just add all right uh, let's move to the next task where we will talk about um, like what type of data we can ingest and how we can ingest a certain data. So, um, like Splunk can ingest any data. So, uh, the sources of data can be event logs, website logs, firewall logs. Like you can you can um, import any logs from different sources and aggregate it in that one uh, platform. So, which is a Splunk, where you can normalize this data and uh, query through this data and query all logs at the same time. So the most um, data sources that we can uh, uh, import is like the files and directories. Um, we can create some network events and generate logs using the um, simple network management protocols uh, uh, protocol and import from the remote devices the, the logs. Like for example, you'll have a setup a port for uh, simple network management protocol and import uh, uh, data from those agent installed on the on the one um, other devices that in are in your network. Uh, you can use IT operators like to import data from the Cisco devices and other like network apps deployed like cloud services. Uh, you can use like uh, query import data and logs from the databases like MySQL, Oracle, you can import like security services, uh, data from uh, like uh, Microsoft Active Directory, like Symantec, uh, Endpoint Detection. So you can import different types uh, of um, logs and from different type, uh, different sources. And like here we have the Windows sources, like when we can import all that Windows event log, Windows registry, Active Directory, performance monitoring and more. And um, you can uh, review like all the documentation regarding the specific data source you want to add there, or like if you have a particular uh, uh, type of uh, source that you want to work with. And here is the dashboard with where we can add this data. Like for example, if we'll have a paid version, you will have like a, um, like options to import it from the cloud, from uh, your networking appliances. Uh, like your operating system, like your security agents and so on. Or you can import like uh, data from the monitor that you have, like presets that you have on the device where you can uh, like select a certain preset uh, of the logs and import those logs and uh, use queries to investigate those logs. Or you can upload a certain log that you already have been generated or provided by the security analyst and uh, you can investigate these logs by uploading it into the sim and query uh, query um, data based on on the criteria or filters that you think that you may uh, need to use so let's move and try to to see this uh, um, capabilities so we can go to basic dashboard in here and we have that add data in here. Also, you can do it from settings where it's data inputs. So you can uh, do it those that or the other way. And here is going to be like a monitor where we can upload already pre-configured uh, logs. Like for example, we can choose the local event logs, and we'll have um, like types of event logs that we can import. Like we can import the event logs for applications, event logs for security, for the system. Like you can import one of those uh, event logs and you can go and then uh, investigate based on these logs. And um, we can do the same like from the settings 
where we can do data inputs and there we can select even more like here is just like um, like some of those event logs that you can use but you can add even more if you want and you can do it uh, from the settings and data inputs and you can edit this uh, like um, for example collection of the event logs uh, and we can add like or look for other ones that are available for us so you can see here is way more of them like more event logs that we can uh, use for and uh, in this case uh, it asks us to, to use the event logs for the sysma so we can query some some data from you So let's go find this uh, Microsoft Windows Sysmon that we just imported. And here it is, the, the one we just imported. And uh, We'll select this log and we have added this log in here and it asks us to upload this plan tutorial data on the desktop how many events are in this in this source so we upload this source of the event of the event logs and it asks to to search um, to search how many event logs are generated by this particular source to search um, I forget to add the data in here like the source from what where we're gonna we're gonna use to to query our data so we need to go back and add this data so we need to go to add data because we just went and add the, the the monitor in here like we add uh, the source on which we like we want to use to to investigate it but we haven't add the the source of this data like we didn't add the logs so we can go to upload and upload from from local um, machine where we can select the file and in our case we have um, a file with some logs which is in the tutorial data and we'll upload it and move to the input settings and for the input settings um, because it's a it's a windows machine we'll need to use the regular expression on path but if it will be the linux machine or mac os you're gonna use the segment in path and uh, um, that, that's how you're gonna give it input settings that's how it, it, it it's explained in uh, in their um, tutorials like here is the tutorial how you can how you can add certain data or upload and you can see in here for the Linux and Mac OS it says to select segment in path and add one to the segment number but for the Windows machine, we need to give it a regular expression, like this regular expression, order for uh, for the host to get that source path segment. So we'll come back and give this regular expression in here. it yep we good we good and submit so now we are uploading this logs that were generated for us and we can investigate those logs and use some queries on it so we can start searching based uh, we can start searching this uh, log file so we open up 
we select all the time and it's gonna tell us how many events matched in this particular log file and we got an output of 109864 events that are in this particular event log and the question was how many um, how many events are in this source so it's 109 864 all right so let's go to the next task where are we gonna use to do some basic queries uh, we'll query this block so you can use the asterisk or the star in the search bar and it will give you anything uh, like all the files in uh, in this log. Uh, you can use some filters that are in there already like uh, sorting by last 24 hours or all time or a specific time frame that you want to use and uh, filter based on this like uh, time frames. Also you can use uh, uh, focus on specific source like you want to, qu uh, to query data from a specific source that you have on this um, uh, on this instance, and you can choose even a source type to to filter it down. I mean, or you can choose even like to use um, like certain uh, keywords or uh, give it um, like a certain um, granular search. You know, like based on uh, on the on the certain. Um, like event IDs and so on. So let's see what they explain to us here. We've done this, so we yeah we can search by source, and then we'll see the the selected fields, and then we can expand and see like um, like what those uh, event logs are, like how many count of event events are in those logs, and uh, percentage of those event logs. It's uh, the percentage of all events for each source. So in this case, they tell us to use this this type of this source because it has more data in it instead of using the the source that we just created uh, to to generate uh, our queries. So let's do this. Let's let's sort based on this particular source. And here is the uh, sources. Okay. We're just been showcased. Like we have eight sources in here, and this is all related to this particular uh, uh, source file that we uploaded. But if you want to see all of them, we can and use a star in here and get all logs and all sources, and and then we can uh, check those uh, sources in here. So we got 11 sources and they are showcasing here and it tells us about um, like uh, the count, percentage of those uh, event logs and here is the one they, they told us to use because it has the most like event logs in here and uh, the one that we just added it's not even here because we don't have any events yet for that particular uh, source type we just added. So we're gonna use this one and it will give us all events logs for this uh, source. And here we have that selected fields, like we can search by host, uh, the source, which we already selected the source and the source type. Also you can add fields, like you can add into your um, selected fields uh, other fields like you can come in here and choose the one that you want to see it on your dashboard more often like on the top of your um, fields or you can come and choose one from here like let's say I want to see the hash hashes in here click on it and I'll say yes I want to see it in my selected fields and it will showcase it in here and also you'll see it in here like it's gonna give you the this uh, four selected fields it is gonna 
look for them and give it to you in here as well. So we should case this one. Um, what else? So like we can use um, like to structure our query based on the event IDs. Like you can just add on and uh, this plan it will automatically all apply all this. Um, filters in there and you can uh, make your uh, query more specific and like the um, the fields like those fields like event IDs those are fields and we can see those fields if you can expand like for example let's let's choose this event log and if you can expand it we'll get all the fields available so here is the field that you can use to filter based on Right, and you can ha you ha you ha you have it in here as well. So if you choose a specific field uh, as a filter, make sure you type it exactly as it is in here because it's a case sensitive. And for example, you want to use a keyword to look for in a in a log, then those keywords are not case sensitive. Also, you can use a phrase to filter based on. So uh, phrase you use the. Um, commas and uh, give it a phrase inside those commas and it will filter based on those uh, on this uh, phrase so we explained the concepts here um, also you can add the, it to the search if you want it right away instead of typing it in the search bar like let's say I want to choose event ID right event ID and filter based on event ID I can do this this way or I can for example choose event ID from the fields in here and click on it so double click on it um, okay so you cannot um, add it right on the, um, the field but you can type it and it should be correct but you can add on the value for those fields like for example I want to based on event ID I can click in here and add this to the search bar based on this uh, event ID uh, value not the, the, field, the field itself but the value so it's gonna look for all the uh, files like because I select star it's gonna look for all files in this particular source file uh, source log and it's gonna look for the event ID 7 which which of those log contain this and it's gonna give me the number of events available for it so this is one way to search uh, also you can type a certain um, like keyword from from like just just the keyword that you 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 are looking for so for example, I'll select anything and I'll give the keyword uh, Google updates. And actually you can see it, it, it's even um, matching it right away and gives you output that you can pre-select it right away in your search bar. And uh, it's gonna give you all the logs that contain this particular um, keyword in it. And also you can add multiple uh, keywords and the multiple fields to filter based on. Like let's say I want to filter based on now. Like in their case, they use Chrome installer. So you can use the Chrome installer to showcase the same. Installer.exe. And it will give me an output that contains both of those. So I got just nine events that contains both of those uh, keywords and for example I want to look based on the phrase like uh, failed um, let me see if the this one will work if not we'll just use the comma
Okay, so yeah, you need to use commas all the time because in the in the OAuth query you can use the commas. Okay. So we will filter based on the phrase failed passwords. Password failed passwords. Okay, we got. So you see, you can filter based on the on the phrase as well. So in uh, in this case, they used failed password for Sneezy, which is a user, and it tells that it has. Uh, it tells how many um, failed pass. I mean, how many events has been generated. So let's use the same case. Or sneezy and we'll get the output of how many events and it's gonna tell you where all the source types where it um, source types where it found it so there's the source type where where it's been found and it generated from the file that we uploaded and it's gonna tell you us the host I mean host is okay so you'll check for the source types from where these events came from where it happened And we discussed that we can add a certain uh, fields to our um, um, to our selected field, and it's gonna show us it in the in the bar below the each event log. Also, you can explore all this um, documentations in here to learn more about how to use those uh, search uh, fields and. Uh, like get a more specific and more granular um, search for uh, a query for for whatever um, you are investigating. Also, you can use this quick reference guide, which is uh, like contains all these um, functions that you can use, and it gives you a description of each function and some examples of it, how you can uh, how you can use it for doing your queries. So. Use Plunk to search for the phrase fail password on the tutorial.zip as the source. So the source we have uploaded and uh, we'll just use the fail password. And that's and it that's the the event events generated by this particular um he, uh, particular phrase. So we've done this. What is the source type? So the source type it was here, and it's uh, www one slash secure. So www one slash secure, and that's our uh, source type. So in the search result, look for look at the patterns tab. So the patterns tab is right there, where we can check for uh, for patterns generated. So we have three patterns for this particular uh, um, particular query we used. So we have three patterns, fail password for different users in here. And uh, you can come back and see it asks us for the last user in this tab. So the last user in this tab is me y u a n and that's the last user and the answer for this question. So now it says to search for the failed password events for the specific username and how many events are returned. So for doing this, we can come back and do a um, failed password for this user, right? So we can go and structure our query based on this failed password and for user it's uh, M -U -M -Y -U -A -N. and we'll get the events for this and come back to events. And here we got 16 events generated based on this failed password. And the source type is the same and the uh, host is the same. So that's how you granularly can um, like narrow down your query. 
So we got 16 um, events for this particular user. All right, let's move to the next uh, task, which we're gonna explore the Sigma rules. So what is Sigma? Uh, Sigma, it's, it's, um, it's a generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant log events in a straightforward manner. I mean, basically the Sigma is used for um, translating like certain events rules, uh, certain Sigma rules uh, in different formats, um, like for different scenes. So for example, you, you, you want to share a certain um, indicators of compromise with another uh, team uh, from different company and uh, the t or even maybe a team in your company, but they use a different uh, theme and uh, like how, how they can get the same um, indicators of compromise and l uh, use these queries to, to sift through the logs. So they can use the Sigma where they can translate those um, um, rules from one um, type of uh, sim to another one. So let's go and uh, check what is a Sigma based on the, its um, GitHub um, repository. It says it's a generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant log events in a straightforward manner. So the rule format is very flexible, easy to write and applicable to any type of log files. The main purpose of this project is to provide a structured form in which researchers or analysts can describe their own developed detection methods and make them shareable with others. So the most important point of the Sigma is ability to share these files like with other, um, other um, analysts that use different platform. And we can go to the to the uh, website w where we can use the Sigma rules to make some um, conversion, like translation of these uh, rules from different sources. All right, uh, we discussed about the Sigma. Uh, like here is the supported target scenes, Explang, Microsoft uh, Defender, uh, Azure Sentinel, Arch Site, Curadar, and there is actually way more of them. Um, right here, like Carbon Black, Core Light, CrowdStrike, and Elastic, and like all of this, it can be used to translate from Sigma to one of those uh, sim platforms. Also, you can generate uh, like uh, signatures in the rules folder uh, using the SigMac to convert. Uh, convert a certain um, logs or um, event rules. So let's go and explore this Sigma. In this case, it says to, to use the Sigma rule for user added to log administrator. So we can come back to the website and you can, you can find uh, already the fields available here, or you can import uh, a Sigma rules in here it will, and then translate it. So in that case, that um, Sigma rule should be existed. User added local administrator. So that's how it's gonna look the, the query in Sigma. And that's the, the output for Splunk. Uh, Splunk, sorry, Splunk. So this is the output for this plan. So you can use this uh, um, query in your search bar in this plan. Let's see if it will work for this particular scene. I mean, for this particular uh, device. Because I had a hard time adding it. And yeah, I don't know, it's, it's not pasting. Usually you'll just paste in here and you'll be able to search for this particular e event um, for this particular rule. So the best way to get familiar and comfortable with Sigma and YAML files is to inspect the repo and look at Sigma rules and create some of your own. So you can do this like on the GitHub and uh, check their files in here, like here's the rules and then you can explore different rules for different um, 
operating system like Linux, Mac and Windows and based on this you can uh, check all the rules available and search for them. So in our questions what it asks us? It asks us to select a document feature um, what is the Splunk query for Sigma APT29? So we need to look for for um, a query that we we will translate it from the Sigma to our um, Splunk scene. So we can go back to our um, to the Sigma website where we can look for this. So we can look uh, Sigma APT29, and we got this ruling here. And that's how it's gonna look the rule for Sigma. And what it says, this method detects a suspicious PowerShell command line combination as used by APT. So it's gonna look for, uh, for this particular command line in here. And we can check what's gonna be the output for our uh, command line uh, in Splunk. So that's the command line that we need to use for our um, Splunk instance if you want to search for it. I don't have the same issue here. I don't know what's wrong with that. I cannot input in here from copy paste. Um, let me see it. Um, command line. Let me type this command in here. bypass to store and close the bracket and that's gonna be the command to look for. So we got zero event it means that we don't have any persistent friends on our scene in this particular event uh, in this particular log so it asks us for the command and here is the command and okay next so use the github sigma repo what is the splunk query for cactus uh, torch remote thread creation so we can go to the github and search for this uh, particular um, query and find if we have any rules in sigma for this query so how you can do it if you know the path, you can come and find the path. But if you don't, you can just search in the bar and select this repository. And it will give us... Um, oh, sorry, I didn't copy it. Uh, did I copy it? Cactus remote. Where is my repository in here? Go back. So I, I've, I've selected the rules. And here's the the rule that we look for to be matched by. And here it is. We got one code, which is in a rules windows, create remote thread and sysma cactus yaml, that yaml. And here is the sigma rule for this particular query. And I can grab the row, a row file from here and go back to our sigma search bar and clean it up and input this um, why it's not copying it. okay just need to copy it like this and input it in here and translate to Splunk so here I got the command line and I'm gonna copy this one and that's the query that I'm gonna use to look for this particular uh, like uh, event so I'm gonna put it in here see if we got the output so that's how you use the Sigma 
to navigate and search for a certain uh, queries that you want to run and to look for particular um, patterns and uh, malicious threads that may be reside on your log files. So let's go see and get accustomed with the dashboard in visualizations. So dashboards are panel displaying different data and uh, we can create um, like different dashboards um, like to be easy to be readable for us and uh, like overview it, the entire environment or the entire the, um, like our security posture. Usually it's used by the SOCs uh, to create a variety of dashboards. So, I mean, we can use like basic creation for the dashboard and like you can create a dashboard based on a certain um, uh, query that you've done. Like for example, in this case, it says to use this particular source file and to generate uh, uh, the event IDs for the, the top five event IDs. And based on that, create a visualization and choose what, what type of uh, um, chart you'd like to be, uh, your data um, like outputted and visualized. And then you can uh, like use the dashboard panel like to save it or even make it as a default on your um, like um, main page. So let's do this particular um, test. So we'll come and choose a source and our source is the, that particular file log and we can pipe it into top limit five and we, we, we use the field event ID. Make sure type it correct and all time search for it and we'll, we'll generate some log files in here and it's going to give us a count for, for how many of those event IDs and how many particular times it's been um, triggered. So then you can go and do the visualizations for this particular event, uh, for this particular query. So you can basically better see it. So I mean here is a default line chart but we can come to here and change the chart and that's how we can customize our dashboard and then we can go and save it the dashboard panel and if you have already one you can choose an existing one if you don't you can just create a new dashboard and let's give it a t um, try hack me uh, event Log dashboard and I'll save it, and we can we can view this dashboard. So here is the dashboard, and we can view it in here. We can also edit it if you want. We can like change um, another um, like visualization type style, chart pipe, and so on, and. That's how you can do it in here. We have already it saved. And also you can, um, you can use to you can use to set it as a home dashboard so you can see it on your um, main page. So if I do this, set as a home dashboard, here is the main page and here is the dashboard outputted. So here we got event ID 11 and we have 7725 event um, events generated for this particular event ID. So that's how you can create dashboard, how you can set, set it up as a home dashboard and you can visualize it. And if you need more details to check about it, you can check the documentation file how you can make it more custom for yourself. So it asks how, what's the highest event ID and from our case it's event ID 11. 
which has the most of them and that's the that's the dashboard and visualizations so let's go to alerts what is alerts alerts is a feature in Splunk that enables us to monitor and respond to specific events so alerts uh, use a safe search to monitor events in real time or on schedule alerts will trigger when a specific condition is met to take the defined course of action and you can uh, search like what do you want to track like how often do you want to check that for those events like alert trigger conditions and throttling how often do you want to trigger an alert and uh, like what happens with an alert triggers so I mean in our instance in here we don't have a paid version it's just a free account in here so we don't have uh, options for setting up alerts but if you do set up alerts you will get receive messages in here uh, which will notify that particular trigger has been triggered and it will generate alert so you can take action or you can specify like another source where you want to to get those alerts sent to so be notified for taking some uh, responses so here is a, a, a setting overview for this uh, uh, how, how you can create an alert like you'll give it type a title you will set up a permission for this uh, particular um, alert and uh, you can schedule it to run in real time for example you generate an IP address um, that is the demolition IP address that you want to be notified when it tries to to do some recon on your um, network and you will be alerted in real time so you can take action right away or based on those alerts maybe you, you have set up some uh, automatic rules for uh, threat, threat response and you can schedule alerts as well and give it uh, expiration time you can uh, set up the trigger uh, conditions and uh, that's how you set up certain alerts alerts to take action as well you can you can set up to take some certain actions so you can check more about this um, like on, on the Splunk documentation how the alerts are working and uh, like what uh, what conditions you can you can um, like what type of alerts you can generate and how to set them up correctly okay and no, it's not working so that's basically the basic overview of how the the, Spl the Splunk dashboard looks like and um, like we've done a basic um, overview like how to create a dashboard how to use the Sigma rules and uh, use those rules and apply to our uh, Splunk uh, to search for queries and um, like we use uh, basic queries to filter our um, event logs uh, we we used to add um, like logs from the local files. We talk about the Splunk apps that we can add on this um, uh, sim, and uh, we took a basic overview of navigating uh, the dashboard for the Splunk. So, I mean, Splunk is is very complex, and it, it can be very um, like hard to understand like more deeper concepts but once you get your hands-on experience with it and you use it more often you're gonna get accustomed to it and it's a real powerful a really powerful tool and it's it's used by like all security analysts uh, worldwide I mean I'm talking about the sim and uh, the Splunk is one of them and it helps us to like to get like better uh, understanding of our uh, security posture and um, like uh, the like doing a basic threat hunting and investigation instead of just going and uh, looking uh, through the um, like uh, like like the sysmons and other uh, sys internals like for the Windows machine like it it helps to aggregate all the sources of the logs and tools and um, like trying to create a, a faster response to a certain events so it, it's a very powerful tool and like all the security analysts should learn 
and understand the concepts and how to navigate it and uh, how to use it for doing their uh, like log analysis or thread hunting or just um, auditing for the um, network. So thank you for joining me today for uh, a Splunk basic introduction and have a good one.